the forms of crap out of Draco's match right there. Fighting through contact, fighting through drop as long as being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, it's about football, not storylines. And hello, you are listening to another edition, the 15th edition of uh, Blue and Splits. We've been hitting you guys with a ton of, uh, ton of podcasts in the month or two that I've been with uh, Jets X Factor. Uh, today we have 33 plays of Ashton Davis. Um, as you can see, Marcus is still in Antigua uh, scouting out my, my, <laughs> my wedding spot, but we, uh, we appreciate him joining us uh, yet again to break down another uh, skill position player. So Marcus, uh, what's up? And I know you watched a little, and I'll, I'll get into the other housekeeping stuff after this, but I know you got into a little bit of Davis um, and you talking to you before the show, we kind of agree on, on this player. So what are your general thoughts before we dive into each and every play? Oh yeah. I mean, obviously the um, athleticism is there. Um, obviously being a former track guy, you, you know, he can run, um, but I mean, he's a project. I mean, he's raw. I mean, to be honest with you uh, in, you know, playing at Cal and being, you know, kind of, and I do separate just the type of game that, you know, the Pac-12 plays from the SEC and SEC plays from Big 12, you know, et cetera. Um, you know, that game's, you know, out there is a little bit different, but I mean, he's a raw dude. And honestly, he's just been kind of playing on the athleticism, athleticism that he has right now, to be honest with you. Um, and you can tell he needs technical work. Um, and that's in regards to whether it be angles, foot placement, tackling, you know, I mean, he's going to be a little bit, you know, a bit of a project, you know, to be honest with you. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think because he's coachable and I think because he, you know, hasn't really played a lot of football and being up to this point, the coaching that he's taken, you know, he's done well with. So hopefully, you know, once, you know, the, the just DB coaches and, and everybody, you know, kind of gets them coached up and shows them different things that, uh, you know, he continues to grow. I mean, because he, I mean, the upside is there, you know, it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a project though. Yeah. And I, and I agree with that. And um, we were in lockstep uh, in terms of that. And we're, pr we're pretty much similar on a lot of players. So when I ask you about players, either I give my opinion before you say it or give it to you after we're pretty, pretty lockstep I've seen so far, which is um good thing for me, I guess. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So Great minds uh, alike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, the next show will be Zuniga. I'm watching him and I'm, I, I told you before this, I'm not sure how much you watch of Zuniga, but it seems like the jets with a lot of these mid round type picks are taking swings for the fences with the guys who are pretty raw, uh, which Zuniga is as well. I'm going to do a bet. I think I have 25 plays on Zuniga, which I'm not going to announce yet, but might be with another special guest, uh, which would be pretty cool. So uh, and, and I, I think after that's going to be P Ryan too. And P Ryan, I have like six games of tape on. So that's really, really cool. Um, other than that, blue it splits on YouTube, uh, like subscribe there, uh, the podcast staff are at 49 reviews, the 50th one, I'm either going to send a free t-shirt or I'm going to send a free subscription for a year or whatever, um, to that person. Uh, the jet shop, as you can see, actually, I got, I just got my, my jets X factor shirt, um, right nice. here. So we got one of those and I got, I think I got, I got another one here too, which, Hey, Solid, solid, uh, solid stuff. Maybe I'll send Marcus something too. Maybe I'll send yeah. him the X Factor shirt. You, so, um, you can always go to the Jets to X shop and, and check out that stuff. Uh, and we still have a ton of film to, to, uh, to get into. But before we do that, uh, quick thoughts on Frank Gore signing with the Jets, 37 years old. Um, people are freaking out a little bit about it. And I'll get into his tape review in two months when I do that. He's on the back burner right now uh, as a third string, most likely running back, maybe second string. Um, but what are your thoughts on adding a guy like Gore, who I don't think is going to be necessarily the, num the number one or two back in the offense, but uh, what do you think he does for a locker room, especially with a guy like P. Ryan there, a rookie coming in? And Frank Gore has been wi – he's widely respected through the league, a really hard worker. That's why he's 37 years old, still playing running back. Right. Um, what do you think that does? And, and do you think it's a bad move? Do you think they should have looked for more explosion as a number three guy? Like, what do you think they uh, – what do you think of the, si the signing overall? Well, no, my thing on the side is I think it's good. Obviously, you, you always have to have, you know, that locker room presence uh, – you know, from some of the veteran guys. I mean, but think about the kind of team that the Jets have. I mean, how many veterans, especially guys that have played this many years as he, you know, as he has, you know, on the team. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I mean, look, I mean, you can look at the starters on offense, you can look at the starters on defense. You know, there's only, there's really only 
I don't, I don't even know if there's a handful. You know, there's not that many. I mean, this is a young team. So now yeah. you get a guy in with that kind of experience. Not only does he help out the, the running back group, but he helps out Darnold. He could possibly help out the O-line and the wide receivers. I mean, there's so many things that he can contribute, you know, that are actually beyond X's and O's. Um, understanding how to study, <clears throat> you know, how to watch and study film. Uh, guys understanding how to work out, how to take care of yourself. Uh, you know, the mental aspect of it, uh, you know, just from a psychological, you know, psychological perspective, how to get ready for games. Understanding, you know, <clears throat> you know what moments, uh, you know, when certain moments come, you know, being able to make those plays when you need to. I mean, there's a lot of things that he can contribute outside of just playing, you know, playing running back. So I think it's a good signing. I mean, you got obviously Bell, you got your explosive guy in Piran. You know, Gore is just really, you know, kind of the glue or kind of, you know, just a, really he's kind of like a player's coach. You know, if you think about it, you know, he's going to be passing on advice, uh, yeah. you know, giving, you know, tidbits, uh, you know, giving, you know, examples or, or uh, you know, telling the guys about experiences that, you know, probably some, you know, a lot of those coaches probably can't because they haven't been in the shoes. You know, there's, mm -hmm. you know, not that, obviously not that coaches aren't able to relay some of that information, but the truth of the matter is there are just some things that players go through during the course of a game or a practice or whatever it is that you you can't get from a coach. Like you just can't. That's just honestly got truth because, yeah. you know, they're not going mm -hmm. through it, you know, live as you are. So, you know, really I think it's a good signing just to have somebody that's been, you know, successful and been productive, you know, in this league for a long time and bring them into that group where everybody's young to, to help out and help them work. Yeah, follow, I want to actually follow up before I even get into my quick thoughts on it. Um, as a former player in the NFL, what was like? What was that like for you in terms of getting an opinion from a you know a coach, uh, your DB coach versus a DB who might have been a veteran on that team who would help you out? Like, what was the difference in your mindset? Like, did you trust the guy who's a player more because he did it um, versus a coach? Like, how how does that kind of work in in a locker room and and for you personally when you entered the NFL? Yeah, well, well it's not that you necessarily trust the player more you know that's actually playing or that's done it it's just yeah. that he can give you a different angle or give you a different perspective on it so when you know before you know, I guess I should say like when Belichick obviously Belichick seen and you know and been through like a ton of stuff all right so obviously he if he gives you info um you're going to definitely hear everything that you're saying and really a lot of the information that you're going to get from him you're actually going to get from players because that's how – that's his coaching style. He really wants to know what the player sees. He, he'll have you explain it to you, break it down or whatever it is so he understands it and he gets it. Um, you, know, and, you know, and, you know, I was fortunate enough, you know, Todd Bowles played in the NFL when he was my DB coach. So it was easy to, okay, yeah, get that from him because he had already gone through it. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you trust the player more. You just get – you just get the live – you get the actual live perspective as opposed to getting, okay – well, this is your technique. You should have been here. You should have been here. Well, okay. And now the DB, the play, the guy that's the actual player. Okay. Well, what stem did he give you? What move did he give you? Um, you know, you, you, the questions are completely different. You know, from that aspect. You know, how was he lined up? You know, things like that. So, uh, you just get a different angle, a different perspective on it. You know, when you're, you know, when you're getting, you know, from coach to actual player. Yeah, and you mentioned a good like point about the Jets locker room being relatively young. Young, and the only players I can honestly think that are like thirty plus is Van Roten, who might not even be a starter, um, and Steve McClendon, who's like 33, 34. But other than that, everybody else is pretty young. And people think that okay, it's a young roster. We're trying to build for the future. Every single signing has to be a guy who's twenty four, twenty five years old. And yeah, right. maybe I would have liked Powell back more than Gore. Like you know, but I'm not going to kill the signing for a guy who's going to be like a third string mentor type running back. Maybe even in, depending on the si situation. You trust Gore more than more than P Ryan. I would. It's you know he might yeah. he might be lacking physically at some things, but in terms of like okay, big passing down and and Bell is gassed. You know you want him to to fill in in pass protection. Would you trust him or a rookie? You know, and especially with an off season that's going to be shortened most likely. Having a guy who knows Adam Gates' system because he's been in it before in Miami, um, I think that's a, a good thing. And you don't have to sign every single player who's going to be twenty four or younger. He's it's, it's going to be a one or two year deal with the Jets. And he's going to be 
added there after that. So, um, and a lot of people just would go to Google, oh, yards per carry. And we talk about stats last, we talk about stats all the time, but I messaged one of the most uh, knowledgeable Bills guy I know, and Eric Turner, who's a, who's a friend of mine. And he was basically saying that Gore was used in short, short yarded situations and would be used to run the clock at the end of the games, which is obviously going to affect your yards per carry. So right. he also was saying that they did a lot more of Singletary in terms of um, unloading the box for him. Whereas Gore, he would be running against eight guys in the box consistently when he was in the game because they right. didn't pass to him. So there's certain things that go into the yards per carry that, again, you can't just look at stats as the end-all, be-all. So we'll see when we break down the tape or when I break down the tape of what he looked like in 2019, maybe a little bit of 18 or maybe even a little bit of him under Gase. Uh, but to get into Davis, uh, going to do the typical reading of the strengths and weaknesses that I listed when I watched his film, uh, Cal, 6'1", he's 23 years old, uh, 202, 30 inch arms 30 and a half inch arms uh mentioned before he's a you know a star track athlete um and he walked on at cal as a track athlete and he also walked on as a football player um if i'm not mistaken um at cal so he's really really young at, uh, in terms of football knowledge and and experience in the position but uh strengths that i listed uh rare athletic ability great character top end speed acceleration f- uh, fluid quick backpedal great range toughness likes to throw body around click and close uh, more that's more about his acceleration to the ball uh, right. will drop helmet into any running back tight end wide receiver or even offensive lineman fluidity in feet and hips change of direction skills uh, can play in shallow or deep zone uh, which we'll talk about the the, the rawness of that uh, can play man versus tight ends running backs or wide receivers had some snaps at, li- at linebacker or in box leverages himself well against deep routes over tops over top more shallow routes we'll talk about that too we're pretty pretty weak in terms of his uh kind of angles he takes to those routes uh ball skills offers special teams versatility is a kick returner punt returner things like that uh keeps feet under frame and rips punches that ball weaknesses uh the first thing i listed marcus was instincts recognition is lacking in some areas um right. comes into tackle uncontrolled too often needs to shorten strides when closing ground uh can play as cover one deep safety but needs more time to develop in that role uh, can be looked off by quarterback easily looks back to quarterback too often while in phase with wide receiver distracted by contact Inpatient and off man can be too hoppy in coverage and air quotes hoppy uh, reaches for contact. I think I already said that once uh, ankle biter type tackler, which won't, which won't work often in the NFL block shedding needs to read field better, more consistently inconsistent angles and a kick late to cr- uh, close ground uh, on open wide receivers. Um, the games we have of all 22 or that I watched and Marcus March, uh, watched a decent amount of it too, was uh, old miss Washington state, UCLA, USC, and then, I watched two games on YouTube of Washington and Old Miss. That's all the, the only way I could find those games. So let's get into his film uh, first play. And this was a kind of a trend I pulled up that I noticed in his, in his off-man coverage it was that he tends to open his hips too much, uh, too quick, and he's following this guy across um, right here in the across motion. Uh, right. I don't really get too crazy on what I call motion. I call that a cross motion. And – Something that I like to see him do better um, on on this rep for me is to fight to stay more over top of that route, not allowing the the easy inside break where he really tends to open his hips up and give the guy the inside more. Now, it looks to me to be a, a cover one look, whether that be cover one hole, uh, cover one funnel, where they're may, they're maybe playing, you know. Both, both of the linebackers were playing the, the running back. The running back broke outside, so he took him. I don't know what the assignment exactly was, but he was in man coverage, at least to me. Um, like I said, I don't know if, it was, if these guys were walling. I don't know if they were holes. I don't know exactly what their assignment was because it's hard to tell without them exactly doing it. But um, Davis is responsible for this guy who motions into the slot, and I, I think he opens up his hips too early um, in coverage. And I also don't like how he's looking back to the quarterback, it seems. Um, yeah. And I think that's a big, big mistake when obviously when you're beat, you have to just play that receiver. You can't be playing the quarterback as well. So what are your thoughts on, on this play? Um, do you see anything differently? No, I mean, the first thing that, he, that you want to do is, is, I mean, he's good coming across, but you want to definitely square up <clears throat> and, and try to get, get on balance a little bit more. Um, yeah. He actually runs across and yes, he's playing outside leverage because they're playing you know, kind of like a one hole or one cross, you know, kind mm-hmm. of with the two linebackers down, you know, they're taking anything inside. Um, but, you know, he needs to be a little bit tighter. And, yeah, he's staring at the quarterback the whole way. I mean, like he – I don't even know if the – honestly, if the wideout just continues to run, you know, if the routes were, you know, had changed and 
you know, number one down here ends up running, let's just say he run a, runs a curl and, you know, his guy ends up running a deep over anything, that yes, he has safety help over the top, but he's never going to get there, you know, because he's, you know, too busy looking at the quarterback. So he needs to square up a little bit more, uh, you know, at least try to redirect or – and if you – because he moves up, he can actually get some hands on on the you know on the guy that he's covering. No, uh, college yeah. DBs are caught are taught to play with no hands. We we talked about that last yeah, episode. We, yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, it would help him if he you know tried to reroute the guy or or get some kind of jam just at their death. But yeah, he he over you know overplays it. He's just opening and, and you know opening the game and running you know and staring at the quarterback the entire time you know while he's trying to cover, which you know that's you know something he's going to have to work on. Yeah, and he gets lucky here that the ball gets hit by the or the ball hits the ref too, so it's an incompletion. But that's not a that's not particularly a good play for Ashton Davis right there. And uh, like you said, I I think he's pretty raw. I don't think the a lot of Jets fans they automatically draft a safety in the third round and oh well trade Marcus May now because he could play that deep one role. I don't trust him there yet at, at all. To be to be honest, um, I'm going to try to give my honest opinion. I don't want to. Oh well, every single jet draft pick the Jets make are fantastic. Like and I think he can be good. But I think he needs to work on quite a few things before he's relied on as as a starter. Um, so this just looks like cover three cloud to me. Yeah. Um, and he's not dropping far because there's no there's no threat really dropping there. So he's just going to be pretty shallow in, in his drop. But um, the thing I do like here, I, I think, and I mentioned this, I think that he he does leverage himself over top of routes relatively well while he reads the quarterback. And and, it's, and listen. We did a wide receiver breakdown, me and Marcus together, and wide receiver is a little bit more flashy. Safety is a lot of the little things that you have to kind of look for because they're not involved in the play all the time, especially when you're a deep guy. Um, but I do like that his eyes take him, um, and I'm not sure if he's staring at the quarterback the whole time, which it looks like he is. It takes him over top, over top of that post on this uh, dagger-type concept with, the, with that probably bender route right there, and then Ooh. the dig underneath it. Um, and I like how he leverages it over top, and then he closes ground on the uh, – the dig and he's able to make that tackle yeah i mean i mean honestly just because of his position and here's the thing i'll be honest with you i can't give him a whole lot of credit for this okay i mean you're, I mean, you're in deep third and you're playing I mean, deep third <laughs> you're playing deep third so you should be able to see both of those rounds yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean no i you know i can't really give him too much credit for this i mean but obviously you know it seems like he even though he does have a tendency to stare at the quarterback you know a lot um you know, he can, he's able just because of his alignment and where he is, he can see these two routes, you know, whether it be the deep post or, you know, the deep dig coming. So, um, you know, it allows him to have a good angle, you know, to come down and make the tackle, which, I mean, yeah, that's his job, you know, coming from there. We'd like him to be a little bit more physical on the tackle and not just try to block tackle, you know, and mm-hmm. throw a shoulder in there and kind of lay on it. But, I mean, yeah, but he, I mean, the, I mean, obviously looking at the little things, you know, he can, mm-hmm. I think he has the ability to see the field once he stops you know, staring at the quarterback so much and, and getting caught up in that in that action. Yeah, that's definitely a big issue um, with him, which is strictly reading the quarterback. And listen, if you're going to read the quarterback, just the quarterback in the NFL, you're going to get like looked off nine times out of ten unless you're playing a guy like Mitch Trubisky or, or some garbage guy like that. <laughs> um, so he's in the bottom slot right here. Again, uh, pretty similar situation. And again, this is, a, this is another situation where he gets beat inside. Again, pretty flat-footed. Um, he doesn't really work to stay over top. And I'm, I'm okay with, okay, you know, like he has feet where they're a little bit flat-footed. And, you know, if the ball was thrown here, he rallies, he makes a tackle. Not a big deal. Like that's, that's not a huge deal to me. Maybe he's a little bit flat-footed but not too big of a deal. Issue is the eyes are back to the, to the quarterback again, and you're going right. to see him lose that receiver because he's not seeing the, the break of the wide receiver before he does it because he's looking back to the quarterback. And it doesn't look like this is designed. It looks like it's a mesh concept, and he – and he realizes he's not going to get the ball, so he turns back around. I don't think this is a designed route. It's not like a Colorado or anything like that. It's really, it'd be really, really odd design, to be honest. But um, his, his eyes screw him again here where he loses the receiver, and the receiver is, is wide open, um, and he's able to make the – or no, he overthrows it. The quarterback makes a bad throw, but Davis is beat pretty badly here because of his eyes. Yeah, bad eyes. Um, I mean, I personally don't like – especially at that depth, I don't like the flat-footedness because – you know, you just kind of just hop in their place and then you got to take off and run, especially, you know, when you're playing teams that run, you know, a lot of mesh concepts or, you know, things like that. Like you, you get left in the dirt, you know, in the dust quickly. So mm-hmm. uh, even if they're playing, go back to the start so I can see what the linebackers are doing. Um, all right. So this looks like cover be, one straight. Just, this is like, this, I don't know if there's a safety deep. Is there a safety deep? Okay. Yeah. So it's like yeah, cover one. one deep, yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, it's still similar to one hole, but the hole kind of leaves because you've got this uh, this linebacker. I mean, I don't know if he even, you know, this other guy, you know, what they're doing with the back or whatever. But yeah, yeah, because yeah, you would think one would stay so they can, you know, kind of hold off the cross the route and let the DBs catch up. But but either way, um, you know, he's too far away from the wide out, you know, really just based on alignment. And here's the thing. If you started from the very beginning uh, where they lined up, that's no man's land. So five yep. yards is no man's land. You, you yeah. can't, you know, because you can't get anything, you can't get anything done at five yards. You know, you can't, you're not able to read, you know, in all coverage from five. Mm-hmm. It's hard pressing it from five yards. You know, that's why, you know, you hear a lot of coaches and even players call it no man's land. So yeah, now, that five to seven yard window. Right. So yeah. here, his alignment's off, so it puts him kind of in a bad spot already because going across, like, he's beat already. Yeah, he can run, but so can the other guy. But staring at the quarterback while you're trying to cover guys, you know, especially in the slot, you know, in man-to-man coverage, mm-hmm. uh, he's got to stay a little bit, a little bit more. He's got to stay more square and understand that, especially at the, at the NFL level, you can't just take off and run with guys. No. I, it's it's just, yeah. not going to happen. Yeah, great point. I was going to say that. It might work at Cal sometimes, but yeah, you can't in the NFL, anymore. it's not happening. It's just it's not, not happening. No, it's not going to work. So he's going to have to change this and, and definitely get better at this. Yeah, that 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 five to seven yard, that no man land where you know you're 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 too close to read the quarterback, um, but you're not close enough to get hands on. Like it's it's a really bad kind of coverage. I don't mm-hmm. like it, and I also don't like that catch man. Like okay, that 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 two yards off and press. Like I understand soft shoe, but that whole catch man, I don't I don't really like that that, that air quotes catch man coverage where. You're kind of letting him release um, cleanly every single time, not really th- even threatening the press. Right. Um, I don't like that coverage either. So the two coverage I don't really like. Either you're gonna press him or play off. Like that's how I feel yeah. um, about coverage. So uh, looking at the next play, I think this is reach for contact bottom slot. Okay. So we have like and a lot of people. Oh well, he could just play man coverage. I I think that's it. that's one of his weakest areas is playing man coverage. He he really tends to get panicky with his feet and open up his hips pretty early, um, and and here he's on the bottom slot again in press right. uh, looking into the quarterback. But the thing with this is I'm fine with like a jump jam, but you got to make sure you're bringing your feet with you. On, you're on balance because if you miss that wh- is what happens here. You're completely off balance. So exactly. um, you got to at least bring your feet with you. And that little false step right there that, that gives him, that gives a receiver that extra second to do like that split release right there mm-hmm. um, and get away from the hands. Now, now he's lucky he ran a, like a hitch real quick hitch. Uh, stop whatever you want to call it because he could have beat him deep pretty easily but what do you see or do you agree with that uh assessment of that yeah i mean whenever you're quick jamming you know that's why when you do see a lot of guys quick jam if you i mean you can go back and look so you don't take that false step usually it's staggered in some kind of way you know and it depends on yeah that little kick step yeah yeah you're already lined up so you don't take that false step but mm-hmm. the thing is and it actually kind of goes back to what we were talking about with mims uh blocking being able to you know, to bring his, you know, bring his hips and bring everything underneath him so he can control the wide out. This is the same thing. You know, when you're quick jamming, you know, wide out at the line, you got to throw your hips forward and bring, you have to bring your body with you and bring your, your feet with you and keep everything underneath. So when you do make the contact, now you jam the receiver, you're in control, but also your hips are underneath you. So you're able to take off and run, you know, if he takes a wider release or if he takes a yeah. wider release down the line, you're still able, you know, to, you know, kind of control the jam and stay with it while you're running. But here you just, you know, he just missed, you know. Yeah, you don't want to see this picture. Yeah, you don't want to see this. Yeah, because this easily could have been, you know, if he hadn't run a hitch, like you said, you know, this could have been, this really could have been a bad, you know, a bad play. Yeah, if this was like a, you know, let's say if this ended up being like a smash concept, he broke on the hitch, then he broke outside. That That's oh, yeah, it's safety's over. not yeah. getting there, you know. So. Exactly. Yeah, and I know a lot of coaches teach that um, because a lot of guys, when they're not really sure what to do, uh, to do with their feet at the line, they tend to, to jump split, and then you're automatically on your heels. So I know a lot of coaches teach that little false step, kick step right there to eliminate the, the split where they're allowing. They're actually teaching that false step. But when it's back like this, that's just – it's way too much time, and you're already putting yourself um, on your toes right here uh, right. a little bit too much. So, yeah, really – lunges for that contact which you do not want to see a lot with the upper body um which is not going to result in anything good unless that guy is just stationary and you're going to hit him catch him in the chest but you can't expect that especially at the nfl level so um next one we have a uh press again let's see i don't think this is ending up good either i don't i didn't see a lot of good press from him to be completely not, yeah and we're going to get some, some more positive plays. Don't click off after five plays. I think five plays in a row have been negative. But, again, I'm not going to hold back and say he's a great, you know, 
he, he's the most technically refined. This is the kind of stuff I'm expecting for a guy who is, was a walk on and he was at Cal for about two, three years. Yeah. Um, and just, and just barely playing football. I'm expecting a lot of this stuff. So he needs a lot of development. Um, again, you're in press coverage. Your, your first move is to throw your weight on your heels. You're not going to get hands on. And as soon as he stems a little bit inside, you're not going to shuffle over top. You're going to open your hips. And now this is complete. Any, any cut outside right now is completely open. Yeah. But look at his eyes though. I mean, go back to the, I mean, even after that, when he makes the cut, like he's already looking at the quarterback for yeah. whatever reason. You're only three yards into the route. Like there's, I mean, unless you're running, obviously, mesh where you work your way up, you know, three to five yards or whatever it is, but nobody's getting the ball right here. And even looking, if you're paying attention and if your eyes are in the right place on the wide receiver, you know the ball's not coming. So he, he's got to get out of that. That's it's a bad habit, where, yes. Yeah, I don't know where he got that from, but he's real, you know, trying, he's, he's really too focused on, on the quarterback, especially in man coverage and, and not enough on, you know, on the wide out. Yeah, especially man coverage. And from what I've learned and what I've taught myself is the only times you really want to look back to the quarterback is obviously during read steps. If, if you are playing in off coverage or if you're, you know, if you're hip to hip to guy and you have contact with them, so you could feel a break, but if you don't have contact with the guy, you're really never looking back to the quarterback. That's just not right. happening. Right. So there's only really two times you want to look back to the quarterback. And when you open your hips up so early inside and now you're looking back, like you're guarding against nothing outside. You're completely taking away one of your senses to see if hit, what his route break is going to be or what his stem is going to be or anything like that. So he definitely for sure needs coverage, uh, man coverage, uh, kind of uh, prepping or coaching or whatever in, in the NFL because I'm not sure if what the Cal coaches were teaching. Now, I can't just blame the coaches either because what if they were teaching the right thing and he's just so raw he wasn't doing it? You know, people exactly. are like, oh, well, it's the coaches. Who says that? Like, you know, a lot of people right. blamed Frank Pollock last year for the Jets' offensive line troubles, but how did they take the coaching? Were they too old where they were forced into their bad habits so they kept relying on their bad habits, you know? So um, this is going to be a play I have a feeling you're going to say you're not going to give him a ton of credit for, but he's the, he's the <laughs> deep uh, – looks like another uh, cover three cloud with the, you have the press in the bottom. Um, and so I, I think again he shuffles inside right here, and they're running they're running like a double post. Um, it, it's another one of those like dagger con dagger concept with a double post. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he leverages himself in terms of like staying over top of both of these guys, being able to play uh, play both of these routes where he's shuffling inside a little bit, um, and then he breaks outside. So I think it's a decent play. I'm not going to give him a, a crap load of credit, but you got to I guess note some stuff down for a guy who's who's so raw at the position. Yeah, he does. I mean, and and I mean, being able to stay over the top, which obviously, like I said, you don't get a whole lot of credit because you're deep. <laughs> um, but the the only thing that I don't like is I don't like here. He's still standing at the quarterback. Yes, you can yep. feel. Yes, but and yes, you can feel the wide out and see what he's doing. But even as the play continues, because he's still staring at the quarterback, watch the wide out down when he steps back. Boom. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, so if that ball is, if, if that, let's just hypothetically say the ball is still held and there's no pressure on the quarterback, he's standing at the quarterback when that wide receiver, you know, is now doing the scramble drill, like he's lost. Like he's he's lost. really got to work to get hands on before he looks back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got to get there and be able to feel the wide out, you know, if anything, because if there is a possible scramble drill, and let's just say the wide out, you know, escapes his pressure or whatever, now this guy's wide open in the back because he's standing at the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, but, you know, we've been saying this, you know, for every play, you know, he's, he has to stop standing at the quarterback. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Play seven. <laughs> I didn't realize this review started off so poorly. Hopefully it gets a little bit better. Um, but again, it's, you know, this is, this is one of my, when I watched him, I was like, okay, I get, I get it, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what he develops into because he's definitely pretty raw. Um, man rep bottom again. I had a lot of man reps in the beginning. Well, yeah. Um, so this is this is a little bit better from him. Um, not as bad as the la as the last few. He actually shuffles the stay inside. Now the one th the one problem I remember watching this play was, um, and this is what I learned is you really wanna you really wanna stay over top of that upfield hip, um, because if you stay too far inside, they could break on the, on a double move. Let's say it's like a sluggo, whatever it was. Um, so if they were to break upfield, they're all, they're coming into contact with you. So I, I think I think he plays this a little bit better, but I actually think he might get a little bit too far inside right here. Where his hips are open, and if he were to break outside right here, he's he's beat. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean the thing is, he doesn't. Even, I mean honestly, he doesn't even have to open his hips because of his depth. He just stays square and just shuffle laterally and keep running. Yeah. So now, if you do possibly get, 
any outcut. Like if you get a yeah, right here, hit him and he's you know whip it back out. You can play both. If you get um, uh, and I already said reverse reverse pivot or anything like that. But any outbreaking mm-hmm. route because he already has you know his leverage and he's square. Now he can break on on both and play both routes. Um, so honestly, what I would coach him up to be you know here particularly because of where he's lined up is hey you don't have to worry about opening up and running so fast just you deep enough you know shuffle shuffle stay lateral once he you know the wide out you know his hips determine and tell you where he's going then just take out you know now you can go and play the route you know you don't have to really open up that much because the thing is in bad eyes are being especially you say that the college level but it, it's actually they're actually really bad at the nfl level as well they're not cornerback play is not good right now yeah hips the hips tell you everything mm-hmm. I, I don't know any man unless he's the six million dollar man or the bionic man who can turn his torso one way and his hips be going the other way jerry judy it's just, it's just not no it's just, it's not, <laughs> in, not in with jerry judy it's just anatomically not possible yeah you know yeah. you know your hips tell you everything so as mm-hmm. long as you're focusing on the belt buckle or you're looking at, you know, well, they don't, I don't know if they have them anymore, but where the drawstrings tie up, like right in the front of the pants, that's always your landmark. Because unless that turns, you don't have to turn. You just stay square. You just stay straight. That tells you everything. So, like here, he still could be, you know, he could be square. Uh, obviously, the wide out is kind of leaning that way, that way, but he could still stay square, you know, and, and be ready for any, you know, pivot route or outbreaking route as well and not be so, you know, so quick to take off and run. Yeah, just because of this position, is his hips are because he's angling off inside are are pretty locked inside. It's to be really hard for him to turn around. Like he's not gonna be able to yeah. flip. He'd have to he have to hope it's like an outward breaking route and and, and speed, speed turn to turn. get around to it. Right. But it's uh again, it's it, that wasn't as bad as some of the other ones for me. But again, there's definitely some little coaching points because some people might see that and say, oh, it's a great play. But would it be in a different situation? You know, if something different happened on that play. So I, I like to. And I'll argue this with anybody until the, until the cows come home. I don't know what that saying even comes from, but I'm so much more about the process than the results. I, I couldn't really care less. I could care less about the, the results sometimes. Um, it's really about the process for me. So um, he is deep. He's deep right here, I believe. Oh, yeah, he's in the man. He's in man coverage on the running back. This was kind of just showing his athleticism. There wasn't really a lot to this play. Um, I was just kind of showing his his athleticism to get, to get yeah. downhill on the running back to avoid um, that potential, like, natural rub route right there from 19 and then again though like so I don't I don't think it's so in this situation where the running back's breaking to the flat like I'm okay with a quick check on the on the quarterback but I think his eyes are inside a little bit too long yeah. again he's just staring at the dude yeah <laughs> so yeah. like like at this point like okay quick check like just a quick flash your eyes okay he's not looking this way but still like you can't I, his eyes are really locked onto the quarterback too long again but it's not it's you know yeah he, I mean he's got to get out of that so let's just say and and here's the thing. I know it's easy to make hypotheticals, but the hypotheticals that I'm bringing up are actually legit. Will so happen, yeah. What if the O line? What if they pass it and they slide to the right? So now that pressure's picked up. Uh, quarterback has a little bit of time, uh, and he runs like a wheel route. He runs like a, a wheel route. Wheel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He runs a wheel route. It's a, it's over. It's a wrap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so you have to guard against that. Yes, you can take a you know take a quick peek. My my rule in, in the way that I coach my DBs is you better get there first before you start looking back. So I agree with you hundred percent. We talk about that to, so much. Yeah, get to the man first. If yep. he throws it while you're you know while you're still getting to the man, then obviously you can just make the tackle. You're Rally there. make the tackle. It's a four or yeah. five yard game. Yeah. yeah, you're already there. So yep. you know and you know if you're you know if he doesn't throw it, at least you know why you give yourself time to get there. You're in position now and that you can play ball at that point. So that's that's just my rule in the way that I coach it up. You know, I don't I don't like staring at the quarterback running all the way there. You, you don't even know where the guy is. I don't I don't I honestly Mark I, I that was one of the first things when I started looking into DBs that I learned. Um I I like to think I've progressed farther from there, but that was one of the first things I learned was like don't look back when you don't when you don't have contact. You know, it's right. like or like I say you're taking your read steps, but I don't know why that happens so much. Like, I don't know about you. If I was in, if I was a DB coach, and I was in a college room, high school room. And I saw that guys would get scolded a little bit. Like, I wouldn't hold back. Like, that's such a silly mistake to make. Get on your guy before you're looking back to the quarterback because you don't, you can't make a play if the quarterback was throwing to your guy. So, what's the point? Like, we're gonna try to. You're hoping that there's a there's a route over top and you can make an amazing diving interception. Like, no, like, get the <clears> hell out of here with that. So, um, so he's at the top right here. 
Um, so I, I also think that tackling is going to be one of his issues coming into the NFL, especially with one, how it's coached now where uh, they don't spend a lot of time on, on tackling from what I've heard and what I've seen, because one, you don't want to get guys hurt, I guess. And two, they don't really have enough time. They really need to teach a ton of uh, concepts and things like that. So I don't, I, I don't necessarily like this. This isn't maybe the, the, the worst example of his tackling, but I don't like how he, and there, we'll, we'll sort of some more uh, ones that are more exaggerated, but he's a really an ankle biter. Like he doesn't, he likes to dive at the, at the lower body and he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't ever really wrap up or take his, uh, take his legs with them. And it leads to a lot of broken tackles. Yeah. He doesn't explode. He doesn't explode through. You gotta, especially as you're from a, as a safety, when you're coming downhill to tackle, you, I mean, you literally do have to run through people, you know, because giving, explaining it in that manner allows you, it, it gives you, it gives the safety a visual of, okay, when I'm coming down, me running through somebody means that I have to, uh, you know, get in good position, bring my hips with me, explode, you know, and run all the way through the tackle. You, know, you can't do you can't do this ankle biting, you know, whatever it is stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like you Yeah, leaving your you know, feet all the time. Yeah, leaving your feet. No, you have to put your pads, you can put your pads on the guy's, you know, thighs or whatever it is, but you gotta run through the tackle. Uh, you know, this isn't this definitely isn't gonna gonna get it with any even the smaller wide outs in the NFL to break these tackles. I mean, that's just, you know, I mean that's just honestly got true, just because they're so much stronger. Um you know, so he's definitely gonna have to get better with that. You want, you know, as a safety, you wanna be able to square up. You got to bring your body and you got to explode through tackles. You can't just be diving at ankles. And at least like the Pete Carroll way, like at least make sure to, to wrap up yeah, their thighs. Roll, yeah, if you're going you know, to roll or a rugby tackle or whatever it yeah. is, yeah. I mean, you can do that, but that's not going to get it. Yeah. Okay. So um, he's in the bottom right here. I just put, I just put hit. I don't know exactly. Like I said, I, I eh, see like this, like even I'm not, there's a lot of plays I put on here. Like I'm not even getting give him a ton of credit here because the guy was already getting pretty much wrapped up right here. I do, I do like how he's, you know, he flips the guy over his back, but do you really give him a ton of credit for this? I don't, I, I don't necessarily in terms of like strengths. Um, if he, oh, I mean, cause it, I mean, cause in the thing that I noticed, you know, watching this film when he does, you know, just watching the tackles that, you know, were on film or, or seeing it, he really, he, get, he more so, get, he, he takes the contact more so than giving the contact. He doesn't like in this case, like he's taking the contact. I mean, really, yes, he's lower than the guy and the guy flips over him. But he's not giving any contact on any of his tackles. Um, you know, he's not bringing, you know, the punishment. You know, he's not bringing any of that, you know, to the opposing yeah. player. So, I mean, because that tackle could have been more forceful than anything. Even if he is getting wrapped up up top, he still could have brought a little bit more. Oh, he could have. He could have yeah. helicoptered that guy pretty much. You know, like yeah. when you're when you're a kid, even like when you're a kid, like you. Ta I don't know if people remember table topping somebody. Like you're talking to your friend, you're having a conversation. Somebody kneels down behind him, you push him over your friend, like. Of course, when you kind of just run into him like that, he's going to flip over. But I think it could have been a lot more forceful. Um, okay, so the one thing that I do that I – especially if he cleans up his technique, the one thing I think the Jets will be able to do with him, though, is he, they will be able to disguise a lot of things with him, whether it be bailing um, or, like, capping a guy and him coming over in coverage late because of his speed. So no, that's what you see a little bit right here where they're – I don't know if they're necessarily disguising it so much where, you know, maybe he could be a man cover. So they're kind of capping him a little bit where he, it looks like he might be in, in man and he's over top. So you can right. almost call that a cap. And um, I like the, just the, the, the ability to get downhill and the quickness. Again, it's only a couple of steps, so it's not really exaggerated right here, but I think the Jets will be able to use that with him. Um, right. And this isn't as bad of a, of a snap in terms of man coverage. Now I'm sure you'd probably like to see him maybe shuffle and stay over top a little bit more, but also, because it's a tight end, he's he probably knows that he's able to to open up and stay over top a little bit easier than it would be if it was a wide receiver. So, what do you, what do you see on this play, Marcus? Right. Yeah. I mean, with a tight end, I mean, obviously you can do that. Um, just because you know, most of the time, you know, DBs are you know, especially in his case, you know, he's faster than tight end, so he doesn't have to worry about shuffling as much, uh, you know, and, mm -hmm. and being too far off. So, but yeah, I mean, in this case, it's a good job, you know, coming down. Um, you know, obviously his leverage, you know, is established and, you know, he, you know, he's able to cover the tight end, which is good. So, you know, I don't know if, if they just, you know, plan on using him in that regard when they go to, you know, sub packages and things like that, you know, and that way you can put Jamal, uh, you know, more in the box and use him more as a blitzer, you know, kind of in that case, because mm -hmm. now you got a guy that can actually cover tight ends, but tight ends in, the, you know, in college are 
different than, you know, <laughs> the ones in the league are a lot different than the ones in college. Yeah, they're playing so, the guys like George Kittle this year, too. So. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, I mean, that could be a way to use him just because he has the speed to do that. Now he's got to understand, you know, especially when he's playing like the Kittles or the Kelsey's, you know, now you got to worry about route running and things like that, you know, because those guys are crafty. You know, oh, yeah. Run, and they can run. Yeah. So. Extra, yeah. And I, you know, even guys with like Kittle, like, you know, guys like Garoppolo, who I, I don't think is a good quarterback. I don't really like Garoppolo, to be completely honest, but even he'll, he'll know to look off a, a safety pretty easily and, and things like that. And if he keeps staring back, even that play didn't show it, but he was staring back a little bit at the quarterback, too. So he, he's right yeah. here um, on this interception. There were some plays I couldn't actually send you, Marcus, because they were over 25 megabits and it wouldn't fit into the folder. <laughs> right. But this one, um, he, he has outside leverage on the, on the, uh, Looks like it's just a post. And this shows some of the natural athleticism that he has where he's staying on that upfield shoulder. He opens up with the guy. He's able to match him. He's -hmm. looking back to the quarterback probably too long again here, to be completely honest. And he is able to jump underneath of it. Um, I like that he makes the catch in traffic where he knows he might get lit up a little bit. And he runs back. Let's see the other view of – I think – I don't know if I had to – Yeah, this other view doesn't really do much for me, I remember. Right. But – That's a terrible read by Herbert, though. (laughs) <laughs> it is a terrible I, wow. dude, I don't like Herbert at all I do not like him at all Jeez, yeah that's yeah that's pretty bad but what are you seeing from Davis here I, I like again yeah. this is more about the speed like okay the, the speed yeah, no, to, to yeah, match yeah. and then jump underneath of it oh yeah he definitely has the speed I mean he has that so now being able to undercut the route I mean luckily got you know the receiver's not running something else because as you said you know and yes it worked out in this case uh, but I would say eight times out of 10 this thing gonna work just staring back at the quarterback and 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 trying to I guess and still trying to cover at the same time but you know with his ability yes he's able to only cut the route and, and make the interception you know I, I you know I will give him credit for that you take him how you get him you, yeah you like now like if, if this was more of like a like an inside uh like a Yankee concept where it was like a like a uh, dagger or not a dagger uh, inside like dig and a post like over top right. of like an inside Yankee like then maybe he's screwed a little bit because he's not really on oh, yeah. the hip Oh yeah, um, he screwed on that. Um, I mean, I mean, yeah. If he's running anything like over, uh, if you're getting post dig, anything like that, yeah, he's you know, yes, you have a safety in the middle, but the safety is gonna have to end up helping probably on the post, you know. And if he's running, you know, guy, his guy's running the dig, you know, he's chasing, you know, from here on out now. So, yeah, you know, he's this just is... gotta be more. He's got gotta be more cognizant with his eyes, and because he he the thing that that where he's always chasing. Because he just opens his hips and run, and he doesn't really stay square and stay over the top of this, mm-hmm. this guy, he's always creating that separation, you know, from, you know, from the initial, you know, just from the initial part of the route. This is an interesting, like, this is both an interesting coverage. Like, the coverage almost looks like it's all man with three zone guys underneath, which is interesting. Yeah, it's um, that's, like, but, that's, that's old school, yeah. Yeah, well... I started watching film like 2015, <laughs> so I don't really see oh, yeah, a lot. No, that's, yeah, no, that's a, that's an old school concept. So what you do is you play in with your three outside guys, um, or or four in this case because they're in 11 personnel. But yeah, you play man on the you know you play man over the top in the back, but with your backers, you can oh, zone shallow zones. So, yeah, so you can zone everything off. So you can banter on the back, or um, if you got you know teams that are using, um, you know it's 20 personnel, but they have a back in a we call it a fade, you know a tight end you know, in the backfield. So now they zone off those two, those two guys. Everybody else in the back is playing man. Yeah, and this looks like a uh, – this is like a deep mesh concept too because I don't think they're supposed to – like they're, I think they're supposed to cross because running two posts into each other, I wouldn't say yeah. is necessarily the best uh, offensive concept. Right. So it looks like a, you have like a deep mesh right here. So um, let's go into the next play. Um, uh-oh. Oh, I don't like this play. This is one of the – probably the worst – this is I, – I really did not like this play at all. I remember this. Uh, right here in the right hash. Mm-hmm. This is where I say like distracted by contact. I I do not like that um, right there at all. Yeah, why, um, is he, why is he running at the guy? The, yeah, this is a big. Is coming, the bank is coming right at you. This is a big big negative play for me. Um, listen, you have what looks like to be like a mid zone split, mm-hmm. um, and well, let me. See. Yeah, even if they're trying to do like an outside zone split or mid zone, whatever it is, mid zone outside. I have to look at the, the offensive line a little bit more. You're deep, and this guy's coming right towards you. And look at this hole. Yeah, but well, see, look at that bubble. This, yeah, and this is and this is part of him being raw. Because here's the thing: if you're coming to drop a shoulder into a crack block. Oh, yeah. But if you go back, if you go back, 
my indicator here is based off of my alignment, based off of alignment, all right, if I'm reading the play, I'm probably shuffle, shuffle. As soon as I see my linebacker is already outside. Yeah, right, you know, yeah, right got here. That leverage, I'm right inside here. immediately. Yep. Like, it, it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so 98 and 8. They got the yep. outside, and eight probably overran it, to be honest with you. Um, but once yeah, I he see did. that he's outside, you want to fold back in because now you got to fill that gap. You got to replace. But those And those are things that you got to – that you – you know, that – you know, obviously, yeah, after the – you know, in the film room, the coach will tell you that. But those are things that you have to understand and see, you know, in you know, live, you know, as a safety. You know, you have to be able to see who's in front of you, know where they're supposed to be. Well – Okay, if I know if let's just say eight is supposed to be the outside guy, then I know I'm folding inside. If eight is supposed to fill in on the inside of that gap and I see mm-hmm. him overrunning it, then I gotta replace it. You know, you, you know, those are just things of that you have to see as a safety. And because he's so raw and he's worried about contact, I mean, you know, that's you know, he's gonna have to really you know, understand. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna have to really stay up and understand it and not be worried about I you know, you know, take, they, you know, distract, you know, getting distracted by crack blocks and things like that. Yes, it's kind of distracted by that contact. But like, it's yeah. like, you know, people, okay, the deep safety is the last line of defense against passing offense. It's also against the run game because listen, right. if, if this, if this tackle is able to reach uh, 93, which is a hard job, but mm-hmm. if he is able to do that and 93 is not able to peel off and get his hand on, this could be a 70 oh, yard touchdown because oh, Davis easy. tried to drop his shoulder into a crack block. Easy. Yes. So, uh, not a good play right there. That's that was one of the most negative things I've seen on his tape. That's that's too because you're trusted again both in the run game and the pass game. And Marcus May was good at that. He's good at making open field tackles. I don't trust Davis nearly as much uh, as I do him. So, right. um, fourth and one, um, he is right here on the hash. Uh, they go with a it's like a tackle tackle over a pistol set where you have the. The guard, uh, the the center, and the guard, and then the tackle over right. pistol. And this is a, like this is where I say like some of his versatility. Okay, now he's in the box. Um, he's gonna be aggressive shooting through that B, uh, through that B gap. Uh, that's vacated by the pulling guard or the pulling. Uh, this just looks like one back. Pa- Actually, no, it's not. It's just power. Yes, yeah, it's just power. Yeah, just power. Yeah, it's just power. So he vacate he vacates that that guard. Uh, the the B gap. The guard leaves, drops his shoulder into the inside shoulder, and and scrapes on the line of scrimmage for a tackle. So I like this play. Yeah, that's a good play. Yeah, being able to squeeze through and make the tackle. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if you know he can learn how to do this, you know, at, at you know at the next level, you know, obviously now you got two guys that can do this, you know, because we know Jamal can do this already. Eh, he's um, all right. So, yeah. So you know, <laughs> you got two guys that you know have the ability to do this. Then, yeah, I mean, it, now now you've just added another tool to your tool belt, you know, basically for him. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this is you know definitely a good play of being able to squeeze through. Uh, guy fumbles. You know, and make a play. Yeah, take on the inside shoulder too. Like I, I like that the focus to to go outside versus inside. Um, but yeah, I, I, and again, he's raw, but I think he's raw where he could do a lot of things. But he's gonna need to be coached up a lot. Um, oh, I, I played the wrong play. Hold on, let me uh, bring up the right one. So this was, I think I, I definitely. Well, actually, I don't know if I sent this one to you. So they, let me see what's going on here real quick. All right, so this might be like another 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 cover like three. It looks like it might be another cover three here. Um, he doesn't look like he gets a lot of depth. Regardless, he's deep yeah. middle. Um, yeah, I like to like see him, cover three. Yeah, I just like to see him see him slide over, particularly against this three by one set. So you, you yeah, got, play the you, yeah. yeah. You, you got three by one, and, and a lot of young cats do this. When you say middle of the formation, middle of the field, you really need to be middle of the formation. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So if you go back, the middle of the formation is, I mean, basically where the O is. Yeah. Like you know, if, yeah. So, um, you know, but a lot of young cats do this. So, you know, you just hear middle of the field, middle of the field, and they line up right over, you know, over the middle of the line of scrimmage where, you know, you have to be middle of the formation. And I actually stress that when I'm coaching it, you know, if you have D30, you're middle of the formation. I don't even say middle of the field. I say middle of the formation. Okay. You know, so you that. But uh, in doing that, so now if he is in the middle of the formation, Obviously, he he makes a good play, uh, mm-hmm. you know, getting hit in and knocking the ball out. But if he's over four more yards or whatever that is, that's a pick. The one thing that, that I would sense. like, yeah, no, I, and I get that. The thing that I would that I would almost criticize him a little bit, like four two is here. Like, and I said this in, in his weaknesses is he's really relying on the quarterback's eyes. 
and he's almost late to recognize routes breaking open because yes. if he was checking if he was checking the routes a little bit more, he would jump over top of this a little bit quicker. Um, yep. And again, like you said, that might lead to an interception or like in the, in the NFL, if this is a good receiver, he might be able to make that catch through that contact. So yeah. it's good, but it's also, again, another area for improvement for, and especially for a guy who's as raw as him, I think he's going to be able to get a coaching point on every single play he does, even if it's good. So like you see his eyes are locked the entire time. Right. Um, now good range and good hit to get the, to knock the ball out, but. Yeah, but that's, he could make that play so much easier on himself and actually, you know, potentially make it, you know, make that exception, like you said. Yeah. And one rule that, or another rule that I have in that regard, and it, this even applies to corners, see ball, catch ball. So basically, if you're staring at the quarterback and you see him throw it, it's usually going to be caught because you're usually a second behind, like, by the time you, yeah. you're breaking yeah. to get to where, whoever you're covering, like, he's already catching the ball. You know, that's just, you know, and that's a rule. You know, I'm sure I learned that rule in college, you know, in you know, high school and college, to be honest with you, it's just see ball, catch ball. If you stand at the quarterback and he, you see him throw it, it's probably going to get caught, you know, most of the time. So Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I completely agree with that. And I, I think that holds true over a lot of – if you watch a lot of film or football reps, um, you want to be breaking there before the quarterback. That's why a lot of guys are following, like, the, the hips and the shoulders of the, of the quarterback, not even necessarily the eyes. Um, right. Because that might tell you exactly where they're throwing the ball. But um, – Let's see where he's uh, – I think he's right here. At the bottom, yeah. Yeah, so this is, this is more of a play versus athleticism, Marcus, that I, that I noticed. Like, this is when I talked about, like, the, the hip and the feet fluidity. Now, yeah. I don't necessarily love – because this looks like – it, it might just be, like, cover two. Um, I don't know what the hell they play. Yeah, it might be – because <laughs> you, you have the two guys here in yeah. the curl to flat. Yeah, it looks like deeper. Two, yeah. So, maybe, yeah. maybe – I don't know the down and distances. I can't see it. Maybe it's a little bit of a deeper um, – maybe it's like third and 10 or third and 12. They're playing a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, but, I, but regardless, he, he's, he's, deep, he's deep half, at least it looks like. Yeah. Now, my issue with this, is I'm sure you're going to agree with this, is – Stay square. Yeah. Uh, this whole area is, is <laughs> wide open. Right. So that's my problem with his play, but I did just again. So there's some positive, but this is really fluid hips and feet right here. I, I think oh, yeah. like that little right, that little move right there to flip back out and then uh, then back vertical, mm -hmm. right here, is something little that I that I noticed. But I thought it was pretty good, and even this even this this speed turn right here is pretty. That's pretty tight. Yeah. No. He. Yeah. He's got the athleticism. That's what we said. And being. I mean. And honestly you know, being a track guy, you know, helps you with that. You know, I know people don't usually correlate, you know, track in regards to like hips and things like that, but, but um, being able to run and you learn how to run, you learn how to use your hips, you learn how to keep your hips under you, you learn how to make, you know, make these kind of movements. So yeah, he's got the athleticism. Now, you know, it's just the other things that like, we, you know, we keep saying, you know, that he's got to clean up on, but yes, I, I, I like the fluidity of him. He doesn't look like he's struggling, you know, for any hip movement, even in the speed turn. It, you know, it's just boom. You know, he makes yeah. the turn and, you know, he, you know, he gets back going. So, yeah, he's, he's got – it's there. You know, you mm -hmm. just got you got to coach him up. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, we're about uh, – let's see. We're at play 17. So, let's see this one. Uh, speed reading quarterback. Okay. Um, he is right here again, it looks like, and deep half yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I think that is again like some things he can improve on. I don't like how he's automatically opening like this because let's right. say this let's say this wasn't like a corner post right there. If that just was a corner, if they have good timing, this is this is open. That's money. Yeah, that's so money. <laughs> why is he opening his hips like that? Like I I, I I have because he's staring at the quarterback. So the first thing and the other safety does it too. And I don't know if they're being coached up to do that, which is ridiculous if they are. Um, both of the outs. Like yeah, what? look at yeah, both of them. Look at them. They're both doing that. So you know, maybe they're being they're being coached up to do that. So I don't get it. You, yeah, I don't get that either. If you play <laughs> any deep half, obviously you just want to say square so you can play either route. And here's the thing: if you get double post or whatever it is, um, let's just say you get well, you, it ends up in double post because he's scrambling. But let's just say you, you get have a corner post, post and a post corner. Yeah, I mean, let's just say you get double post. You know, mm -hmm. to both of the safeties. You know, initially. Well, the other safety can still come off and help you on the other, you know, on the, on your post, if that makes sense. So he would be asking, you know, Davis would be square. He'd be square. He'd be square. He'd be following the post. If the quarterback decides to throw that post, the other safety can turn around and, and play that, you know, play his post. But you want to stay square just in case you're, you're getting seven, 
you know, or any outbreaking route as well. Yes, you have a corner down here that's helping you underneath, but obviously if you've got a guy, whether it be a, a, a crosser out coming from the other side or a back leaking out or whatever it is, the corner's got to be cognizant of that too. So he's playing it deep to short, and you're hoping he can force a high throw, mm-hmm. but, but you want to stay square in this. I don't – I honestly don't understand why they're coaching him to do this. Yeah, and another issue too here is is for me is when he's closing ground again, you can see his eyes are – at least it seems and, like his eyes are back to the quarterback again. Yeah. You can and see there's – Yeah, if, if, he, if he was looking at the, at the wide receiver, you wouldn't be able to see his logo. I can clearly see the, the cow. Yeah, logo. exactly. Yep. You, yep. You can tell he's looking at the quarterback. And there's separation again, so – Yeah, because he's staring at the quarterback, yeah. So good speed there, good flip hip – or hips – Flip hip, uh, flip of the hips, I should say, if I learned English. Um, you know, but there's he's definitely really raw, uh, and this is raw on a college level. NFL, it's gonna show up yeah. a lot more. So we'll see how he's used. Um, so they have cover one here, and let's see what I labeled this: held cover one, read leverage. Yeah, so like this is another one where he's pretty late to that play over the top because. He's really staring at the quarterback the entire time here. And like based on, you know, I, I know you want to look back to the quarterback, but based on all these routes, just based on the leverage, you'd probably want to jump over this a little bit earlier, at least in my opinion. Well, um, the, well, the thing that hurts him is, is his lack of depth. So, he, yeah. yeah. So, him staring at the quarterback, looking at the quarterback, trying to get a read, actually isn't that bad here. But because okay. he's not getting any depth as a deep half player, you can see he's just kind of hopping and shuffling. See what I'm saying? He's not getting any depth. If he gets depth, especially with his speed, he can get to that ball. Yeah, he has a range to do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But mm-hmm. because he has no depth, if you see where if you see where the wide the wideout is, okay, ball's coming out. All right. See where the wideout is. So right now the wideout is probably like seven yards away from him. And they're running a seven route. If he if he gets a, a, a little bit more, if he gets more depth and breaks a little earlier, he can possibly get to that play. I know that's a long way, but I've seen guys do that all do that a lot, you know, especially at the NFL level. You know, I've seen plenty of guys do that. Yeah, and if anything, you know, too, like the, the, the corner should be playing more of like that outside where, you know, he's like kind of guarding against a lot of things inside, too, with that cover one. Right. Um, yeah, so, that, yeah. you know, the depth is a good point. That's definitely a good point because instead of, instead of working at this, at this angle where he to go up now, he can just maybe to the back you, of the goal line now he can just work at a flat angle. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah that's, like, that's definitely a good point. Um, let's see. Uh, play 19. <laughs> Needs outside leverage but control. There's a lot of control stuff with, with him. <laughs> yeah. um, so, okay. Now the tackles made here, but what do you what what are you seeing from him? So like this is where I talk like I, he 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 lacks control when he comes down downhill, and again, right. like I'm fine with him maintaining outside, leverage, but maybe you want to get see him get outside leverage a little bit a little bit earlier into the rep so he can work back inside instead of working like inside to outside because then yeah, he takes so, like big shuffles and he has to dive for right. it. And listen, if yeah. this guy wasn't here again, he could probably you break know. his arm tackle. You know yeah. so. So the angle that you that he wants to come down in is you want to come down and you're reading outside hip. So mm-hmm. his head needs to be on the running back's outside hip. So you come down outside hip, outside hip. You kind of, you know, some coaches call it shimmy. I heard a coach, you know, say it, call it that the other day, the coach from Michigan, as a matter of fact. So what you do is you come down, you gather yourself. So you shimmy, 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 and then you explode. You know, through the you know through the running back, you know, as opposed to coming down inside out, especially when you're you know or a, you know a, a, whether it be single high or two high. Obviously, single high is a different angle, but if you're a two high safety with this landmark, you want to come down outside in, if that makes sense. So you come down, boom, yeah. head on the outside hip. Now, I mean, you've got people inside, but now you're under, you come down hips underneath you, shimmy, 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 then you explode through, you know. Who running back hips? You know, you know that, and that's what I said before. Where I, I rather have him, like I said, come come outside to inside because if anything, yeah. I'd rather have him sh- shuffle inside than than sh- have to shuffle outside to get leverage. Right. Should to be prepared for that. So, right. Um, not a great play from him there. I think his his angle is a little bit too up and down right here. Where I want to see him get, like you said, outside then inside. But yeah, because right here he's good. No, oh, sorry. Right there, right there. Now you were good. Right there he was okay. good. But mm-hmm. as a running back's running. Because he's under control now, all he has to do is just shuffle and still maintain that outside leverage. And once the running back comes back in, now you're just shooting your shot and making the tackle inside. 
Yeah. Okay. So this is a play where I like the communication. Um, and I don't know what they call this. Um, first in, first out, uh, Banjo, Zaro, whatever their call is for it. Like I know some people only call cover four Zaro, but they, this can be like a Zaro call too, where they're, it looks like they're doing first in, first out right here. Um, so I like the communication where he's in, it looks like he's in, in off man coverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just playing in and out. That's all it is. So. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I got a weird notification. I don't know for. I hope we're, we're we're still recording. I got a. You've been signed in from another device, so I hope that wasn't for Zoom. <laughs> but we're still recording, oh, so yeah. <laughs> I'm about to be pissed. I don't know who signed into my account without asking <laughs> me. Somebody's about to get hell. Uh, but um, yeah. So I I I like. You know, I don't know what you call it, Marcus, but that's what it seems like to me where um, man coverage, and then you could see him communicating right here. Uh, it looks yeah. like he's rolling his hands for, like, the inside out right um, right here. And then he, he shuffles to stay over top of the, the flat route, the bench route, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then he's able to get his hand on that, uh, that stop. Yeah, the only thing that I would say here is he's too close. He, it's, when you're – and we used to do this all the time when we play, you know, especially with – you know, me, A.G., Ray Nick, you know, Vic Green, you know. So we would either play in and out or we play triangle. So obviously if you got triangle, okay. it's what you bring the safety in. So now the safety takes anything deep and the corners take anything uh, inside or out, you know, in that regard. So First in, first out, yeah. First in, first out, yeah. So before, um, you know, we started doing that a lot, you know, when, we, when we, the, against the like against the coast with Harrison, Peyton, or whatever it is, because they run all those routes. So we started doing this. So really the corner – when he comes down and they're saying, in and, you know, they're giving a the signal for in and out, they really want to be at the same depth. So where the outside corner is. Yeah, um, because if he was a brick outside here. That's where Adams wants to be. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to be that close because now it makes it hard for you and see how he ends up behind the guy. Yeah, exactly. And kind of fighting for it. You know what I'm saying? So now let's just say he, he, gets a, he runs a seven route. It's mm -hmm. over. You know, because the corner's not going to be there to help you because he's curving, you know, the flat route. You know, so that's the only thing that I would say. And that's, like I said, that's, you can coach that. That's just an alignment thing. Uh, but I do like the communication and being, you know, understanding what he's seeing, recognizing the formation, um, you know, taking the coaching and, and making the call. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, see the next play. All right. So uh, at least what seems like to be cover four here. So yeah, I, I would I would I would say so. Um and he's yeah, would, he's oh god uh, wait go back. Uh I'm trying to see who's doing what. Uh go back to the very beginning. I'm just trying to see what they're doing at the bottom. Uh yeah, that's a form of four. Just we you know, they just that's because we do something similar to that with but we the bottom guy, we have a quick is what we call it. You know, he's kind of like a half safety, half linebacker, so he would take the flat, the corner and the safety. You know, okay. over here on the bottom with double number one or whatever it is. But, yeah, I mean, if they're in four, the only thing that I would like to see here is is um, him staying square. I mean, and like I said, I don't know if he's getting coached up to do that or what, but he he, op he he's too, too you know, quick to get ready to run. And too, you know, he's too antsy to run. Yeah, that's – Don't do anything. Because, so. like, the, the, the manipulation of the hips right now, not even by the, by the receiver, but, like, let's say if he were to – to stem inside, outside, um, and then back inside, like on a, on a corner post or whatever, and he was just stemming you because of whatever, then he'd have to speed turn. He'd be back, back inside of you. So, like, he – there's a lot of – definitely open his hips up too early. Yeah. Um, he does stay over top, but you – that's that's too soon to the right. Immediately, he's he's opening his hips he's up. He's opening his hips, yeah. I mean, and guys at this level, especially when he starts playing the third year, fourth year, you know, wide outs, you know, in, you know at the NFL level – they're they'll start stemming him. him. Oh, yeah. they're gonna kill him. Yeah, they're gonna kill him with just with the stems alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, he's gonna have to get out of that and learn how to stay square. Like he he's gonna have to. Yeah. So we're going to let's see. Um, this next play is another one where I'm talking about reaching for contact. We have about ten plays left. Um, right here, man in the slot. Or at least, well, I, I, I said man in the slot before ever, even actually watching the play. But, yeah, it looks like another word, a cover one hole right here. And I don't like the reach right here from him. Mm -mm. You know, you can't do that. But here's the, pro but here's the problem. Go back to the beginning. Stop leverage. Right I mean, he's like four and a half, five yards. You, you're in that no man's land. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, if anything, if he's going to try to initiate any contact, I mean, he's going to have to catch him at this point. But you can't reach because now you're completely off balance. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Like, you know. And which is exactly what happens. Exactly. And that's exactly what happens. Defeat yeah, the hands yeah. and, he's on his, and he's on his face. Yeah. That's exactly what happens. So, yeah, he's, you know, he's going to have to learn, you know, if you're going to play off, you know, kind of in that manner, you're either going to have to be at three yards, which you can do, um, mm-hmm. or you're going to have to be at your seven to eight yard level. You know, it's hard playing, you know, off and trying to catch guys and run, you know, when you're at four and a half, you know, four to five, you know, five yards or whatever it is, something like that. Like that's, you know, he's not going to be able to do that. I mean, you really can't do it in college, obviously, if you can see, but it makes it harder on you to cover anybody. And you can't really initiate any jam. You can't really do anything, you know, if you're doing that. Yeah, I, now I guess the positive of this is, okay, he comes over top and tries to punch the ball out. But, oh, yeah. again, you're reaching for contact. Your hands are defeated. You're on your face. It's like you see a lot with offensive linemen, you know, you see them lean on their toes, you know, a lot of power or a lot of weight into their hands. They get defeated and they're on their face. Same thing in this situation. So, needs to fix that up um, for sure. Missed, missed tackle. Anchor, anchor, we're kind of – okay, this is just how the show is going to go. There's only 10 plays left, so I hope the last 10 plays are a little bit more positive. We haven't really given a ton. The athleticism's there. We're not, I'm not hammering for that. I think he's a great athlete, but there's a lot more to football than great athlete. And, and you know, listen, he's playing, he's playing at a D1 school as a walk-on, so there's going to be some areas. It's not like he's been playing football for 12 years of his life. I would be harder on him if that was the case, but he's definitely a developmental guy. He's not a guy who's going to come in as your week one cover one safety. You know, it's just not right. – there's just no way. No. Um, again, here, so he's at the top of the screen. And um, you have you have the cat blitz corner blitz, and he works over top. So it uh, looks like a he's late number one. Yeah, if you're running, I, if you're running a cat, you got to go. Number one, he's late. The angle's good that he takes, you know, to get there. Yeah, but why? But the rest of the play, he uh, ends t- up getting. Yeah, you got to run through that tackle. You can't, you know, you can't go down ankle biting. You mm-hmm. got to especially especially that that wide out, and I can't remember who that is, but he's a pretty big cat, so he can you know, he can run through that dude and, and put his pads on him. And that's the thing he's got to work on. Nobody's asking him to be, you know, nobody's asking him to be running a lot and just, you know, missile through everybody. But you got to be, you know, you got to be a solid tackler, you know, especially when you're getting these cat calls, you yeah. know, or whatever it is that some people call them, whatever they crash, uh, whatever. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I, so, I, I call it a cat blitz. There might be people, dog, dog, pony, grass blade. Like there's so many yeah. freaking names for everything. I call it a cat blitz. <laughs> yeah, that's so, what I call it too, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so yes. So he's just got to work on – he's got, definitely going to have to improve on that. But like I said, the angle's good. I would like to see him work over a little earlier. I mean, who, yeah. who cares if you – you know, who cares if you give it away? Uh, obviously, the, the quarterback's going to see it, you know, once he sees the corner, you know, shuffling in. So it's already given away, you know, but he's got to do a better job of tackling. You know, staying high, staying up a little higher, you know, raising his target zone and, and tackling better. Yeah, and uh, it's a lot of that, like, plant and, and, and jump into it type of tackles where – you're not using your full body force to drive to the tackle. And, you know, even versus a bigger guy in, in UCLA, there's me guys who are 20 times better than this guy in the NFL breaking tackles. So um, I always wondered about this and I don't, it's, it's kind of like a stupid thing I was thinking about. Like, do you think like guys, if, you know, let's say, let's say there was like a third year vet in the NFL, like let's say like Aaron Donald, who was like a big guy in college or something like that. But like, he was, I don't think he was like the number one overall pick. He's actually like somewhere in like the late, like tens or in yeah, the team or somewhere, like wherever yeah. it was. I always think about like if guys were to learn everything they were in the NFL and play, play against grown men in the NFL and they went back to college for a game or two, like how much they would dominate. It's just oh, always, it'd, be, it'd be ridiculous. Yeah. yeah like, how do you feel like, okay, so you went to college and you went in the NFL for three, four years and you went back to play a college game. Like, how do you feel you'd, you'd play against those college kids? Oh, dude, it'd be, it, it would be, they would have to take me out. Yeah. They'd probably, they'd probably press charges on me. It would be ridiculous. I mean, it just would because you would see everything, you could read everything. I mean, it would be it would it would really be unfair. Like, I mean, it wouldn't even be close. Yeah, and uh, especially playing against college kids, like, and they're all like, listen, they're all guys who are who are two hundred forty pounds, like big dudes. Well, some of them are big dudes too, but compared compared to playing against twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty year old men, yeah, a little bit different. Yeah. Um. Okay, so uh, he's he's at the bottom right here. Again, another thing I think the Jets will be able to do with him, you know, uh, throw him into bails and things like that, disguise coverages um, mm-hmm. a little bit. And this is a good – it's a good play in terms of athleticism here um, yeah. where he – we have the, the linebacker who matches the uh, – looks like a – it's like a 
or the same. Like a, it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's like a mess. It's, it's like a mesh flat seven or a mesh uh, smash. It's, the flat seven is a variation of a, of a smash. So it's, we can call it flat seven, whatever. Yeah. And he's able to uh, dive on the ball after some, um, I guess it's, it's broken up here. So uh, I, yeah. I just noted it because of the bail, the, the, the quickness of the bail. And I think they'll be able to disguise himself because of, the, uh, of his uh, hip fluidity, his feet, his foot co- uh, quickness, et cetera. Yeah, and you, you know what he actually does good for sure on this play? Mm-hmm. You go back to the, the first, the beginning of the clip. When he bails, look what he does when, once he gets out of the bail. Hey, he squares back up. So now he can break, he can break either direction now, which yeah. gives him an opportunity to make a play on the ball. Now, if he had done what we've been seeing, where he's just bailing and opened up and staying, turning, and locked out, he's never going to get there. Yeah, even, there's no way. Even, even, even if he did a speed turn, he wouldn't get there. But because yeah, he failed, no he squared up. Now you can break either way. Yeah, like you said, and I'll bring up the, the that that catch. Um, is like like you said, he, this is literally like a like a pretty much like a fingertip catch. Ooh. There's no way he's yeah. getting there if he, if he had a speed turn. No, and he and he was he was there's just there's absolutely no way. So, um, yeah. good job with that. Let's see, play twenty five, uh, fourth and one near end of game. Okay, so this one just looks like like he was he was filling off the edge here. Um, he's right here on the right edge, and you're gonna have um, you're gonna have this guy knife inside instead of you know he looks like he's playing the C gap, play the play the B gap where he fills in the C gap and plays off the edge. Yeah. Um, nothing really crazy here, to be honest, because he didn't really do much. It was more of the design of this and this guy um, carrying carrying 96 inside. Um, but he is able to get downhill. This is like I think it's like fourth and one, two minutes left. They were up by 10, but this is pretty much shut out the game for for Cal right here. And he's yeah. able to obviously get quick on the mesh point right here um, right. And, and hit the running back and, and tackle him. So, Yeah, no, I mean, it's a good job. I mean, if he can be that physical on all the rest of his tackles, you know, he'll be fine. You know, that's the thing. I mean, it's, here's the thing. It's, it's easier for a lot of guys when they're in that closed space like that to tackle and be a little more physical because you don't have – there's not much room, you know, for the offensive player to, to make any moves or, or do anything. Um, you know, but his issue is going to be out in space, you know, coming down and actually wrap it up like this, you know, you know, on a more consistent basis, mm-hmm. you know, is going to be the thing. So he has the ability to do it. You know, he showed you right there. So, you know, it's possible, you know, he's just going to have to work on work on doing that, you know, out in the open uh, field. Yeah. Talking about some of his things that he could do. This is another big lapse in, in, in coverage for me. Uh, this these plays are not this. This is not a pretty one for me. Uh, Bob is screen right here. Mm hmm. And so it's it. He's he looks like he's 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 deep half. And yeah. Maybe this is two, and this guy just bites down. But again, it looks a little odd. But he looks like he's deep half. This guy is like a, a, a curl of flat. And my problem with this play is not is that not any of this stuff right here, but the quarterback scrambles out to his to his left, and he knows this guy is in, in is in that window where he needs to pick him up. And he keeps looking back to the quarterback, initiates contact, continues to look at the quarterback, and lets him slip behind him. That is not yeah, what you want to no, see right there. That's not what you want to see. I mean, one, you know, what I would say is, if you go back to the beginning for me, all right, if, you, if you're looking at the play and you're, you're reading the formation, all right, so he's in deep half. All right, you're seeing, you know, who's – obviously, you, you, know, you know you only have one wide receiver, so you don't have to get as deep, number one. Mm-hmm. Um, number two – I would like to see him be in more of a control pedal instead of this hopping. Yeah, right here. Whatever it is. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Just get in the control pedal. Slow down. Slow down. You're reading. Take a peek at one. Okay, you see your, the corner's got one. Cool. All right, so now you can slow down like he did. That's fine. But now, QB scrambling. This guy, you gotta, now you got to start finding work. Yeah, which this he is does. your threat. Okay, yeah, he finds work. All right, you know, plaster up on him immediately. Now you can't, like you said, you can't be staring at the quarterback, you know, while you got a guy, even if the guy's on you and you feel him, but you know, I don't know why you would let him go right here. You have to stay on the top of, you know, on top you of the guy. Choke when you him off. Yeah. And, and stay on it. But you know, that's one of the things he's got to work on. You know, he's so busy looking at the quarterback. And like I said, I, I don't know if they teach that at Cal or what, but he's got to get out of that habit, you know, because with all the, the routes, you know, QB scrambling in, in NFL, um, the option routes that they run, like he's not going to have a shot at anything. 
you know, it, it covering anybody if he continues to do this. Yeah, and it's a it's a huge it's a huge mental lapse right here because like listen, like everything was like the, the quarterback didn't have a lot of options because you know you have this guy covered, this guy is mostly covered. I think this linebacker, I'm not sure if he picks him up over there, but he's not going to make this play anyway, uh, thrown across his body. Uh, this guy's pretty much covered. He cuts up field. He has it, and it's just a it's a huge bust. This is a huge bust from him. Um, really, really raw. Like I said, in terms of his coverage, looking back to the quarterback, things like that. You don't you don't want to see that. So, right. Um, twenty seven out of thirty three. This, I, again, this is kind of like I just put this in here because I, I like the trait that he has. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, I think he's right here. So he comes down quickly. He sees the ball is handed off. Um, works through some traffic and he's able to uh, obviously get on the on the tackle. I do like the the effort that he gives in this play, um, yeah. through that traffic, and then he comes in, um, and tries to he tries to rip the ball out right here. Obviously, he's not able to get across his body. He tries to rip it out there, and he right. goes for it again here. So I like that. I, I think that's something to note down. Yeah, I mean, and that's actually, and I'm sure you know they work on you know turnover drills, you know panics, you know whatever it is you want to call it, you know a cow. Um, so yeah, him, you know consciously making the effort to punch it out and try to get the ball out, you know, while dropping down. Yeah, that's something that's good. So it's already embedded in him. And you don't have to coach that. You know, that's just something that he does. Um, you know, my thing, you know, just the more I watch, the, especially now the second, third time around or whatever it is, the more I watch him, I need him to be more physical, especially as a safety. I, I, just, I feel like he's really not – I mean, even initially when he makes contact with the wide out, he's just kind of like laying on him. You know, he's not really coming in and boom, you know, and give him a pop. Yeah, he's kind of just like picking him up here. Yeah, yeah, he's just kind of laying on him. Yeah, so I would like to see him be a little more physical, you know, on, you know, during his tackling, you know, while, you know, trying to trying to create some turnovers. Yeah, because uh, NFL, if you're not coming to a tackle physical, uh, good luck. Yeah, if you're not bringing it, yeah, you, you're going to be on somebody highlight film. Yeah. Oh, Tell he's, yeah. he's going to have a couple of welcome to the NFL <laughs> moments. I can guarantee it. Um, oh, yeah. So – so this play, there, there, there's a different view of this play. So he's coming down from, from deep right here. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple, like, views of this. And it, it shows in the other view, obviously, this is a huge hole for the running back. And, and not an easy play to make by any means where um, it's running like a lead zone or whatever. It's hard to see when you're not behind. You don't have the end zone view. But obviously, the, right. the defense pursues hard over top. Running back cuts it back. Hard, hard play for him to make. But – also, like we said before, outside to in, not not mm-hmm. inside to out, because there's nobody out here to help you. If he was exactly. outside, the guy cuts inside, you have pursuit from the inside. Exactly. So not a good play from him again here. Again, not an easy play to make, but a play you need to make at the same time. Yeah, no, and I mean, and I'll be, because I've been in that situation, I don't know how many times, that is a hard play to make, because, yeah. especially when there's nobody out there. So now the thing that, the thing that you want to do is you want to make sure you're taking a good angle when you're coming down where you're outside in, be on the control. And now, obviously, if you're, if he runs outside, you, you know, your leverage is better and, you know, and you can, and you can make the tackle, but you know, when you come down, so he won't, he, he did. And I think he gets too deep. So he probably need to, needs to stop right there at the line. Yep. I don't know what your line it is, but he needs to slow down now and be shuffling at this point, just because if you get too deep, what happened to him happens. So now you get caught inside because your angle's bad and you're not able to make the play. So if you come down and you slow down right now and now you shuffle and really at this point, because it's just you and, and the running back, really you, you, you want to play it safe and be conservative. Just and make the you're tackle. Just, you're just holding them off and making the tackle. Yes. Yeah. Instead of, you know, trying to come down and, and make a big play. You want to just come down, be under control, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Yeah. And then at that point, hold them off, make a tackle and, you know, maybe somebody else from the posse will come and help you out. Exactly. At this point, just save the touchdown. Like it's a blown play, you know, yeah. just, just save the touchdown. Um, and that's why I said, like, sometimes he comes downhill with a little bit too much head of steam and, and takes like big steps. Like you want to see more control from him right here where he's really just needs to control his body because he's coming so fast. He can't even really get outside on him. So right. um, some things he definitely needs to improve on. Let's see. Um, next one. Okay. This is another one. Nothing too big. Uh, just another note of him punching the ball out. Um, he's, he's man on the, on the tight end right there. Y off tight end, whatever you want to call him. That's what I call him. Um, I don't know if this is a, it looks like it's a design as like a natural rub right here. Just get, try and get a quick, easy completion, make, make, make it a third and more manageable. Um, yeah. he, he, so I, I like I like the one that the fact that he's, he's staying a little bit more square and he shuffles over top of that. And he's not trying to a guy who's like kind of like not understanding a lot of coverage. At least he's not trying to get underneath of this. Right. He's, he's over top. So it's, I guess a little bit of a notch in his belt, kind of, maybe not. 
and then he he is quick to break <laughs> onto the, the the tight end, and he punches. I like that coming over him with that punch right there. Now, I would say in the open field, this is you have to be a lot more careful with this because you don't want right. to go for the punch and and ex, you know etc. And him break the tackle, but. On the sideline, it's not a it's not a bad play. I, I think it's you know it's a, it's yeah. an okay play. Yeah, no, it's a good job of punching the ball out. But I'm like you, I'd rather secure the tackle. And if you get you know if you have a chance to punch it out, then do so. You know, I'd rather the tackle come first than the punch. Yeah, usually the second um, man's taught to rip. At least that, that's yeah. what I've learned. Yeah, but even if you're trying to rip as a the initial guy on the you know the point of contact, especially against a tight end, you want to make sure you got that dude held up first. Yeah, yeah. you know you know so he doesn't you know because there are some tight ends, tight ends that are strong. And if you try to punch it without securing a tackle, you're just going to end up on your back, and he's still running. Mm-hmm. All right, four plays left. Um, this, he, so he's circled here. Obviously, this is obviously from YouTube. Um, this is the play that Washington State I didn't. Um, so I, I like that he's able to – right here he comes off the edge. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, he times it relatively well. Like, he's pretty far away, though, when it snaps. So maybe you'd like to see him cheat down a little bit more than this. Um, and I don't know if it was I, – I should have – I don't know if this the YouTube had, had the full thing, but, like, maybe because this guy motioned over, he was the guy that blitz now instead of another guy over here, whatever it might, might have been. So maybe he was deep and was working his way up. So mm-hmm. maybe it could be a little bit tighter. But I like that he is at least willing to drop his shoulder into the running back and puts him on his ass and is able to get the hit on the quarterback. Yeah. I mean, it shows that, again, you know, what I said a few plays ago, I mean, he's shown that he has the ability to be physical. It's just got to happen all the time, you know, mm-hmm. is the thing. Uh, you know, this is easy because the guy's just standing there and, you know, you just run over the guy. But, you know, you have to, you know, he has the potential to do that, you know, and, and he's shown it, you know, on a few plays. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, being consistent and doing it, you know, is the thing. Yeah, the next play, like we had three plays that I really marked as big negatives. The the play where he uh, let the guy back over top of him, like that, that cover two look, uh, that, that, that crack block, dropping his shoulder. Uh, this is another one I, I don't like um, from him. And, again, I can't see what's happening in the back in the back view because, again, I didn't get the film of this game. I only got YouTube cut up. And my problem with this play is here. So, the, obviously, he's coming from deep middle, deep half, whatever he is. And the receiver bobbles the ball. But this is third and 17. And he dives to the ball. Receiver makes the yeah. catch. And now yeah. he just got 25 yards on third and 17 instead of him just popping them. Yeah. I mean, just at this point, let the other guy go. Just, just absolutely, he just, should absolutely destroy this guy right here. Yeah, he should be running through the wide out at this point. To be honest with you, especially you know, third, third and seventeen, just like you said. I mean, you're already deep and you already have the angle. You should yeah. be trying to, if anything, because and this is just me and my thinking. Seeing where the receiver and the ball is, I don't know if I'm going to get there. There's so, no, yeah, there's very right, so, little chance. So my thinking would be, all right, I'm going to make sure that. I at least secure the tackle on the wideout first. And then, you know, what happens after that happens. But, yeah, I wouldn't be worried about diving for the ball or dropping for the ball at this point. Well, I can tell you right now that if he was to just light him up right here, there's no way he's catching that because that's where the ball – you know, this is – he would make contact at, like, this point and – or, like, even this point. There's no way he caught the ball. So now you just forced a punt instead of Washington State being on the the 20-yard line going in on third and 17 – uh, after a third and seventeen uh, conversion, so like it's that, that you can't you can't do this. That's 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 just like negative instincts for not playing a, a long time, in my opinion. Yeah, he no, needs I to agree. fix that. So uh, two more plays left. Again, I marked this as negative instincts. Um, Old Miss. Let's see what this one is. So I, and I don't I don't I don't necessarily know. He's on the edge right here. I don't know if he was he was taught to take to take the the back in in uh, these read option type scenarios, but. Um, if, if he was, then I guess fine, but I don't, I don't see it like that based on how the play is folding or, or unfolding. So I think he pursues too hard inside over here and, and takes a really flat angle. And he really kind of, uh, he allows a quarterback for an easy read to get outside. Oh yeah. I mean, the, I don't know if that's, a, yeah, I think the linebacker has the linebackers, especially zone read when you have, you know, a DB or somebody like that on the outside, mm-hmm. you're, you're shuffling, you know, they call it surfing, which I hate that whatever it is, but he's got outside. The inside linebacker's yeah. got, you know, is running to the running back. Uh, I mean, it doesn't help that, you know, the linebackers can't get a clean, you know, a clean picture because the line's getting throttled right here. But Yeah, they're getting driven it should, back. Yeah, it, it should be, you know, Davis taking the quarterback, staying outside, staying on the outside leg of the quarterback, and the linebacker's filling in. And once he sees, you know, that he gives it to the running back, then he can fall in on the play. But until then, he's got to stay outside. 
they play quarterback. Yeah, I know there's like some freaks of nature who like they'll they'll just give the assignment of of both the guys. Um, I've seen that a little bit where you have yeah, freaks that's, who. That's, who that's, yeah, that's cool. hard though, dude. Like, yeah, no, and and it, it is hard. Uh, I think Melvin Ingram's done that some. Um, I could be mistaken, but if anything, attack the mesh point. You don't want to take this flat of an angle. Like, attack the mesh right. point. Right, attack the mesh point. If anything, yeah. If so you go attack, attack the mesh point exactly. Yeah. So you know, and if he was your assignment, then even worse. Like, you know, that's terrible. If he was to take both, which I really severely doubt in this scenario, um, at least attack the mesh. But it's that was that wasn't good. Okay, so last play. Of Davis, open early near interception. That's why I labeled it as. Uh, okay, so oh, he's at the top right here. Um, man coverage. Mm -hmm. So I, I like I like the I like the athleticism here. He stays square, relatively. Relative, yeah. But he op he does open a little bit too a little bit too soon in in my opinion. But he is able to to uh, obviously the receiver. I don't know if he's cutting inside. I don't know if it's supposed to be like a stop or a hitch or whatever deeper hitch. Um, but I do like the athleticism to stop and and attack the ball. And he almost gets the interception. He doesn't. But this is more play of like athleticism on to show again. Yeah, I mean he shows athleticism even opening up and being able to come back, you mm -hmm. know, and, and have an opportunity to make a play on the ball. Um, you know, if we're being honest here, I mean, obviously, you know, I'd like him not to be as flat-footed, mm -hmm. and 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 um, you know, not, you know, he's one, he's too flat-footed, which means he's which too far makes inside. Him, yeah, but but that makes him open up quicker. Yeah, so flat-footed, and you're not moving, then you feel like you got to take off and run. You know, that's the feeling that you get. So you're flat-footed, flat-footed. Now you got to open up, and so now you got a guy, you know, stopping on. So luckily. You know they, you know they run a route that you know works to you know his advantage, and he's able to stop, you know, and get back and, and possibly make a play on the ball. So I mean, he he has this athleticism. He does have this. He's just like on some of the things that he's doing. He just needs to be coached up and 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 understand, you know, alignment, you know, depth, you know, things like that when he's covering. But he's got the athleticism, you know, to do it. Yeah, he's definitely raw. Um, and like you said, too, like too far inside, especially when he starts to lean outside, like shuffle and get over top and not just open. Like, he, he, there's the way too much right. of just flatness, opening, reading the, uh, reading the quarterback's eyes, and that's it, like not leveraging himself. Like there's, he's definitely um, pretty raw. Um, but to close out, Marcus, like fi any final thoughts on, on Davis? Like what do you project him as? How, how quick will the transition be to the NFL? Uh, do you see him as a potential starter in the future? Like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just, just uh, talk I mean, on, I guess, your final thoughts. I mean, yeah, honestly, right now, you know, coming in, I honestly don't see him playing a lot. Um, you know, unless he makes – which is going to be impossible considering, you know, I don't know if anybody's going to start camp, you know, on time or anything like that. But um, there's a few things he needs to work on. One, he's got to work on his alignment. You know, if he is in man coverage, you know, mm -hmm. in the slot at any point, he's got to get work on getting out of no man's land and, uh, and being in, you know, just his alignment first. Too, uh, too flat-footed, which does cause you to, you know, you, you, you kind of get a sense, you know, as a DB when you're flat-footed and you feel somebody coming at you, then you feel like you got to turn it open and you run too to early. Open. Yeah, you have to open when you, you know, when they may not necessarily be the case. Um, yeah, and three, I mean, learn, especially because he is so fast, um, he can learn how to soft press. You know, that would be guys that are super fast, like AG, who was, you know, a 4-3 guy or whatever it is. Like, he was – that was, like, his money, the way, you know, in press. You know, he was a – you know, he was a soft press guy. You know, and, you know, that's why he was so good. So, you know, there's certain things like that he's going to have to learn to pick up on. Obviously, um, when he's in deep half or in deep third, uh, being square – and being and make sure that he sees the you know the routes you know the receivers around him reading the combinations you know seeing what's in front of him um and not staring at the quarterback so much uh you know obviously the tackling the angles you know being more yeah. physical in that regard but like i said he is a project so i see him as more of a special teamer probably year one mm -hmm. um maybe even like year two you just depending on how far you know how much he advances uh between you know year one and the off season going into year two um you know and and if I had to say right now, um, if he were to pick those things up and take the coaching uh, and, you know, he's being taught the right things, he could end up being a starter in this league. Um, I don't know if he would be – I don't know how great he would be. I can't predict that. But I, mean, yeah. I can see him possibly being a starter, you know, year three, you know, or something like that, you know, and, and, and being a productive – you know, not just being out there, you know, because of where he was drafted, but being a productive starter because he's, he's making plays, he's in the right spot. 
uh, you know, communicating yeah. and doing things like that. So, yeah, I definitely seem like like a, like a role player type guy this year, not like a primary starter, like big dime, big nickel, like maybe some of those looks, but I yeah. don't see him playing overly a lot. I, I, I don't see him playing a lot of like cover one deep safety. I think that's super risky at this point, but uh, right. definitely interesting. I, I think they're swinging for the fences on, on his athleticism. Again, for a guy who's so raw to the position, so new to the position, um, you're not going to knock him as much for what he showed, but it's still raw nonetheless, you know, so um, we'll see what happens. But, uh, Marcus, anything to close out? Um, we're going to have you back on to do a schedule prediction. I'm, I'm just kidding. Well, I'll, yeah. <laughs> I don't do <laughs> we're gonna go game by game and say what the Jets are going to win in May. Um, no, but any final thoughts? And then we'll have you back on. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll set up a date again, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, in uh, terms of breaking down another player or game or whatever. So. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, other than that, I mean, that's it. I mean, it's – like I said, um, a lot of the picks, I, if not most of them, I did like by, by Douglas. Um, I do think just, when, just where he was picked was probably a reach. I think he probably could have gotten him later, to be honest with you, just because of how raw he is and, and how much of a project he's probably going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and again, you know, my, just like my initial thought was, you know, if, you wanted, if you're going to draft somebody um, that has the potential to actually play both, uh, it would have been Dents- uh, Dentzler. You know the the kid from Mississippi State. I mean, he's yeah, Cameron Dantzler. Yeah, yeah, he's six two, two oh five. You know, he's a true corner. He could probably play some safety, play a little nickel. You know, I probably thought he was a better prospect, uh, you know, than Davis. And I thought he would have given him, uh, you know, just because a little bit more experience from a technical side um, and understanding things than than what Davis does. But Davis yeah. has athleticism. Um, you know, obviously he can run. We know that. You know, just need to see some other things and you know, improvement wise and being more physical technique, you know, things like that. But, you know, I, you know, and I don't know how much time anybody's going to have, so it's going to be tough to get him up to speed. Exactly. You know, you know, to, to be honest with you, but other than that, that's it, man. So just look forward to, you know, seeing how the rest of the prospects, you know, pan out and yeah. you know, film and see what they have. And, mm-hmm. and um, hopefully they can, they can, you know, be used, if not this year, at least in year two. Uh, yeah, you know. that's what it seems like too. Because uh, Marcus May is his contract's over after this year um, as that deep one guy, um, mm. deep third, you know, deep middle third. So I think they're trying to develop him as that safety. And and listen, if he if he steps up and he takes steps in the right direction, you don't have to pay Marcus May seven, eight, nine million dollars a year. And and right. he steps in and under a rookie contract in the third round um, as a much cheaper option because he has better range than Marcus May. But Marcus May is a lot better in terms of everything else. You know, like he's super raw. Right. Davis so I, I think it's a it's a pick for the future but I wouldn't expect a lot out of him this year to be completely honest he might make a, a highlight player too because he's fast but in terms of like actual knowledge of the game and his rawness it, you can't expect too much in, in my opinion but um Marcus we appreciate you have, having you on and uh for the listeners out there again JetX store uh subscribe leave reviews and we will be back uh in a couple probably like Monday Tuesday with a review of Jabari Zuniga Oh, my God.